Hello everyone, this is Chris from Spoon Graphics, back with another video tutorial for Adobe Photoshop. Today I'm going to show you 5 tips to add authentic looking black and white analog film effects to your photos. While modern digital cameras produce vastly superior images with crisp colourful pixels, photographers still love the nostalgia of old film based cameras and the character of the photographs they produce, especially the beautiful mood and tones of black and white film stock. It takes a lot of practice and experience to master analogue photography, plus there's a lot of messy work with various chemicals involved to develop traditional photographic film, but Photoshop has some great built-in tools that you can use to transform your digital pictures into realistic looking film based shots. It just requires a basic understanding of how analogue pictures are made, so you can then find ways to mimic the appearance with Photoshop adjustments. But first a big thank you to Envato Elements for sponsoring today's video. Envato Elements saves you time, effort and money with unlimited downloads of premium design and stock templates. We're talking over 600,000 creative items made from the world's best designers, including print templates, graphics, photos, fonts and now royalty free audio tracks too. Envato Elements literally has all the creative assets you need under one flexible, budget friendly subscription. Check them out today by hitting the link in the video description below. To begin creating an authentic analog film effect, open up a standard digital photograph in Adobe Photoshop. I'm using this photo of a pretty lady in a black fur coat from Shutterstock. The quickest and easiest way to properly convert your image to black and white is to use a black and white adjustment layer. Unlike desaturating or converting to grayscale, this adjustment layer preserves the tones of the image and produces the black and white effect based on the colour information. One of the advantages of modern photography and post-processing is we have loads of sliders to finally control every aspect of the image appearance, but traditionally photographers would rely on colour filters to alter the tones. Some of these filters are preserved in Photoshop as presets. Click the menu and toggle between the blue, green, red and yellow filters to see the difference they make. Yellow filters were a popular choice with analogue photographers. But in my example I like the green filter because it enhances the skin while retaining the darkness of the red lipstick. Photographic film had to be developed with chemicals in order for the image to emerge. Different chemicals would generate different colour casts. Some of the popular toning effects are available in Photoshop as gradient maps. Add a gradient map adjustment layer, then under the small settings icon, load the photographic toning presets. Here you'll find effects that replicate the appearance of authentic chemical toning, such as the antique browns of sepia or the silvery blues of selenium. There's also cross-processing effects and cobalt, copper and cyanotype presets too. The difference is very subtle but a slightly colourised monochrome appearance is much more realistic than the pure black RGB values the default black and white effect produces. Film grain is another much loved characteristic of analogue photographs. Unlike the ugly pixels of digital ISO that ruins the image, the sensitivity of photographic film produces a texture that adds to the shot. As I discussed in my film grain video earlier in the year, there's a range of techniques you can use to add grain to your images. One of the quickest and easiest methods is using the camera raw filter. First convert the original image layer into a smart object by right clicking the layer and choose convert to smart object. This will allow the image to be non-destructively edited so the effects can be modified or removed later. Open the camera raw filter tool set from under the filter menu. The setting for film grain can be found under the effects tab where you can adjust the amount, size and roughness. Unlike a basic pixel based noise effect, this film grain looks much more realistic and the scaling ability is particularly useful when working on high resolution images. Once a film has been developed, the photograph would then be reproduced as a print, but the type of paper stock would also affect the appearance of the picture. Modern photos are typically printed on glossy paper, which preserves the deep blacks, whereas luster or matte prints have more of a subdued appearance, which is preferred for black and white imagery. The weaker blacks of a matte print can be replicated in Photoshop using a levels adjustment layer. Move the darker end of the output level slider to the right slightly to clip the blacks to more of a dark grey. The highlights can also be brought inwards to eliminate any bright whites. And there's one more addition that can really help give your images an old film print look, and that's to overlay one of my film dust textures. 
You can download this pack for free from my Spoon Graphics website. Inside you'll find a variety of textures from subtle grain to heavy particles. Placing this texture over your clean digital images helps transform it into an old print that has been slightly damaged and distressed over the years. Select the texture and open it in Photoshop. Go to Select and All followed by Edit and Copy. In the main document, paste the graphic, then use the Command or Control key on Windows and T shortcut to transform. Scale the texture to fill the canvas. Set the blending mode of this layer to screen to make the black areas transparent, leaving just the white dust and scratches. The final result is a lovely black and white image with the charm of a nostalgic film photograph. By using the tools available in Photoshop, we are able to transform a clean digital shot into an authentic looking analog photo. If you enjoyed this tutorial or learnt any new tricks, be sure to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel to stick around for more. Head over to my Spoon Graphics website and join my mailing list to receive more free resources. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.